So the idea goes, first there was the Word, and the Word is God, is God. Alright, and that might be some awful paraphrasing, but the last bit, the Word is God, that's totally from the Bible. Um, what's the Bible good for? A lot more than war, even though the way it's been twisted these days is actually fundamentally used as the cause for war and post-facto justification for war. Um, but it has been twisted, but there are, there are truths that express themselves throughout time, not just through the Bible, but through different texts, um, throughout different cultures, in totally separate eras, all right? And it's not that they're all whispering messages in a bottle and sending it out to the ocean, they're all finding the same story and replicating it, and like, no, this is my story, because, like, ego just reigns supreme. That's not the case. But it might make more sense, Hockham's Law, Hockham's Razor, the simplest answer, that there is information that we all are accessing our thoughts from, our visions from, and we write down prophecy or we channel and medium these divine intuitions into words, these stories. And, you know, when I say divine, it's the idea of that you're accessing information of the divine because God is the Word. Now, if people like to take the Bible literally, then even those that believe in that the idea that there's a man with a beard in the clouds and like a, a dude literally died on the cross, which might have happened, but you know, maybe it's symbolic. But pe a lot of people like, don't, don't look at the Bible and think about symbolism. They think what actually happened, and, and that's how it actually happened. They think it's literal. So if, that, if that's the case, then believe that God is the Word. So what does that mean? God is the Word and what? Everyone's accessing the same words the same information, divinity, they're divining. And people divine. People think about predictive programming, television shows, you see predictions being made. And you think, well, no, this would actually explain that because consciousness would be outside, outside of time and space because time is just consciousness moving through space, creating itself through like an etch sketch um, fucking pixel matrix, you know. And... Time is just literally consciousness moving through and creating the image layer by layer, domino chain by domino chain, however which way. Um, so, if God is the Word, then that would mean that it does govern everything, like a master puppeteer, a master puzzler, a master mathematician who encodes the game. And the, in a game, you think about the past and the present, it's like a circular loop because some games you can play it again, right? but you'll come back with extra perks and strengths and developments or deficits and handicaps because of your previous game because it saves it on your user profile, right? But each game seems separate and you're like, oh, I'm, I'm totally just this avatar and I'm totally separate and this is my first time doing this. Like, that's what you think if you're in the game. If you're truly immersed, if you're truly an enthusiastic gamer and you're like, oh, I've got to get into the game. Like, you become Mario, this little pissed off Italian man punching bricks for compensation. Because, you know, bang, and ding ling like a coin pops up. I mean, that's literally some angry dude at work. He's a painter, fucking Mario. And he's like, God, the diamond! I'm sick of my job! Push! And he's like, I broke my hand! I need compensation! Ding ling He gets his coin, right? So, you know, you get immersed and, and, and you think this is my first time being here, but there's actually a user profile that saves the information from each performance and adds it to your next, next game. So in that world where the word resides outside of time and space, just like on the game, you've got this disc where all the possibilities are there. A lot of games these days, it's like multiple choice. Like what do you choose to say in response? Every choice has a consequence down later in the story, on the narrative, or in the plot, right, in the game, in the course. Every choice you make will change the different pathways. But all the pathways are there. And they say in science, in a few realms of science, it's established that in, in a way, the future is related to the past, inextricably, inextricably, they're linked, and one affects the other, but both of them are contained in the present. So our present choices make a world of difference overall throughout time, okay? And this is the thing I want to say, that people think that when they hear words in their head saying, do this, act like that, make this plan, Behave like this. Set this goal. This is your idea of happiness, fulfillment. A lot of the time, these are ideas that are impressed upon us from external agencies or things we picked up from our parents and we're repeating to ourselves. And we think that this is our own thoughts because it's so habituated and dug into our brains like trenches. And they're just narratives. They're just conditioned narratives of our, our ego, our, our super ego, you know, 
Um, but then there are times where you feel that words are coming to your mind telling you to do a certain thing or to say a certain thing or to not do this. Don't do that. That's the wrong thing to do. And you feel it in your heart. You feel it in your heart when this happens. Now, I would say this, that when you feel in your heart, and that would mean that the idea of God, the archetype of God, that is expressed through so many things like transformers with decepti cons, controllers and con artists, fools, gold sellers, and then auto bots, which is this autonomous beings network moving to the same direction who can control themselves or be controlled by the deception controllers or con artists. You have the story of deception and control and domination versus liberation, freedom, creation, love. Right? And it's not just the Bible, it's, it's the idea that the same principles are, are expressing themselves. Hydrogen, oxygen, to, to make water and strike a balance between the, the two polarities. It's, it's a story of energy expressing itself from an elemental fundamental level, O and H, H2O, two O's and a H to link the two in the middle, the rod between the two circles, or in, in the matrix to actually make it 101, so it's an inversion. But that's my, my Archangel Michael, but that's something else. And the idea is that, you know, when you feel something in your heart and you know that what you're doing is right and what you're saying is true and just and you feel, that you, feel you need to do something, then do it. But it's, don't mistake it for a gut feeling. Somebody might see someone at a party and they're like, oh, that guy, yeah, and Facebook they do this. Facebook they make this thing, they're propagating this new age bullshit and they're saying, you know what, if you see someone at, at, a, at a party or anywhere and they give you the creeps and the jeebies and you get a bad vibe and you kind of like, something's off, you don't have to talk to them, because that's your intuition, and follow your gut feeling. Fuck that shit. That's just breeding more ego. You know what I say, don't follow your gut feeling, because how do you know that's not just some psychological anchor, Pavlovian conditional fucking stimulus, unconditional response? The conditional stimulus is that guy's wearing the same cologne as an ex-boyfriend that used to abuse you. He also has a similar looking nose and same shoes, right? But you don't know all this. You just take this information in, and through contrasting and comparisons and simulate, uh, similarities, you draw the connection to a previous experience, a previous person where things were negative and it made you feel like shit. And you start feeling like, ooh, I feel a bit like, ooh, when I look at that person. Because it's just a gut feeling. It's just a f pure physical... I'm trying to be fast to make this succinct. Under like eight, nine minutes, hopefully. That's why I'm like, ooh. But um, you feel like, ooh, I shouldn't talk to that person because of that. It's not because the God or divine is like, oh, I'm your higher self, your guides, your angels, or whatever. They're not, they're not like, oh, we're helping you. Follow your gut feeling there because there's something you're sensing that's wrong. No, it could just be your mind. So if you feel something that's just in your gut, it means that it's a visceral, physical, fight or flight response activated by a perception through your head. All right? If it's just in your gut, that's a biological fight or flight feeling. There's sometimes we have psychological anchors that trigger it. Okay? Now, if you've just got something in your head, then that means it's literally just um, a, a, a narrative or a conditioned dialogue or a pattern of thought, pa uh, pattern of thought forms and, and, and themes that keeps playing itself and getting stronger and stronger more momentum, okay? So here's my advice to all of you watching. Don't just act on something that's just in your head and even your, especially if your heart is you're saying to you and you feel a second voice coming up and this is the word of God. When the word of God speaks, it's like Jesus exists in our heart. That's why it's symbolized by roses represents the heart, the passion, the emotion, passion of the Christ, the heart. So when you feel your word, then say it. When you feel the plan, then take course. When you feel that you have to do something or stop something from happening or stop yourself. Sometimes you might do something because something has possessed you. You know, what possessed me? You get fiery and hot and hydrogeny instead of oxygeny. You just need to slow down and breathe when that happens. Get more oxygen. Trust me, you'll feel more focused. You'll feel more in tune. Like people get fiery and they'll, they'll start abusing someone. And I've done this. I've had arguments and I'll be saying horrible things to someone, sharpening my words. And I'll be thinking to myself, while I'm doing it, I'll be feeling in my heart dreadful for it. And I'll be thinking, whilst I'm saying something totally different, I'll be thinking, Phoenix, what are you doing? Stop this. That you, you love this person. They don't deserve it. Oh, dude, you're twisting that. You're blowing. You know what you're doing there. Dude, stop it. Stop. You're making it worse. You're making it. What are you doing this? And while you're having this internal whispers, debating with your actions, you're just like, blah, blah, blah. You keep on automatic, like, like a deceptive controller got your fire levels up through playing, giving you paranoia maybe, and you know, because we're made up of these things, hydrogen and oxygen, negative, positive, destructive fire and soothing water, restorative. So the point is don't just trust your gut feeling, don't just trust your head. If you don't feel it in your heart, then there's a very, very good chance 
that you are being deceived. And if you do feel in your heart, then that is divine. Have faith, nothing can go wrong.